Good morning, everybody. It's David Knox, top of the hour. Welcome to our first Monday Administrator and Manager webinar, Monday, July 11th. Delayed for the, uh, well, a big weekend, July 4th for you Canadians, Canada Day. Thanks for joining me. Let's see what we're going to talk about today. Number one, and by the way, you know, before I start, let me just check with Rob and see if he's ready to hit record. <laughs> yeah, David, Sorry. we are recording. Rob? You are, okay. <laughs> you want me to, uh, never mind, we'll just keep going. Sorry about that. Muted. Sorry, everybody, we want to make sure that this is recorded for, for those people who missed it. So anyway, our next uh, first Monday is going to be on Monday, August 1st, 2016. So make a note of that. I usually post the link about a week before. Uh, July 26 videos, we'll introduce those. I'll talk about a technical update. And I thought I'd take you through five tips on coaching agents. Here are our new videos. First of all, we hit KFT 100. I cannot believe that we hit 100 Knox First Tuesdays. And I thought, well, what would be an appropriate thing to do for number 100 <clears throat> rather than a new topic? I said, let's, let's go back through the previous 99 and you know pick a few of them that uh, I thought I'd pass the test of time. So we picked answer the phone and KFT 60 on on doing uh, your business plan and a number of others so it's a little bit longer and uh, some of the feedback we had on it was that uh, we picked the right videos to review and by the way one of the things I'd like to remind you all we really look at the comments uh, we really appreciate the rating but we even appreciate more when somebody types in a comment about the video so be sure to do that uh, quick tip number 27 buyer consult cons consulting booklet with Lee Silverman <coughs> excuse from uh, New Mexico and he had a great book that he put booklet that he put together that he gives to his buyers and when I saw what he did I said hey would you like to describe it to us and furthermore could we have a PDF so he gave us permission to have the PDF now obviously you can't use his PDF it's very much his but it will show you exactly how to build your own uh, quick tip number 28 uh, this is Jeff Aaron secured a nine million dollar expired listing plus a 1.2 or a 1.9 anyway you got two listings for the same client by working expired listings so for people who say well that source doesn't pay off uh, they can check with Jeff uh, right into the technical update I'm not sure if you've logged in and checked out the the users list but we made it a much easier we have the users list in fact let me um, let me just go live to my site if you go to settings your users uh, you'll see the three tabs. So first of all, when you tab one is your users list, two is add users, and if you're going to add them, you could do two ways manually. If you're recruiting somebody and you just want to do a quick add, you could instead of naming it the branch, you could call them a recruit, put in first name, last name, email, password, and confirm, and click add users. If you want to upload a lot of them, if you're uploading for those of you who are tuning in today as new members, and you want to upload you know more than you want to manually type in you can ex use an Excel spreadsheet a CSV file and the way to do that is number one let me go here number one would be download your user list and open it up in Excel and then by doing that you can see the proper headers across the top first place last email etc so uh, download that list first then you can add your own information preserving the headers then you click choose file re-upload it and off you go one other thing I want to point out this is an important button right here if you upload a new CSV file you know some of you are doing it every night some do it every month but what you may want to do is click this button right here delete existing users if they're not in the uploading list so if you have fired somebody and you delete them from the list if you upload the list minus the person you fired uh, they will also be deleted from our account. So I hope that is clear. Let's continue on with what I want to cover today. Uh, accountability plans. Oh, I got to fix that typo. I can't even. I can't even look at that, and I know you guys can't either. So, okay, we've added uh, two really cool features to our accountability plans and my gosh I go through <clears throat> and scroll down and take a look at who has and who hasn't cloned an accountability plan and uh, for those of you who have not you are missing the best most powerful feature we have ever created it takes our training above the passive watching video into the active adding videos tasks and actions so when you go to your site uh, for everybody right now you can go to accountability 
manage accountability. If you are an administrator, you get full access to everything in here. You can take a look at the plans, you can clone them, save them, preview them, and assign them. If you're a branch manager, uh, what you'll see are the plans that your company cl cloned only. Uh, we do have a sub-administrator feature that allows more than one person to do this, and uh, that was a new feature, I think, last month. But for all of you, go to Accountability, Manage Accountability, you will see these templates that we've created already. Two of them are new, I think, a couple of weeks ago. 30 days to a listing, and if you click on Preview, you can see the steps we've put in. Get into the listing mindset. We have the videos. We have the tasks. Contact your sphere of influence. Again, videos and tasks. And then we've got open houses, expired listings, and for sale, my honor. And then we go into preparing for the listing, seller counseling, deliver your listing presentation. It's a powerful plan to get your agents off their butts to get some listings. Uh, showing, you, <coughs> showing you the agent side of it, um, I have a sample account here set up for an agent. So um, I use my buddy Dave Beeson. So when Dave logs in, uh, instead of seeing accountability, he'll see action plans. So click on action plans, and let's go to the 30 days to a listing. He clicks continue, and so he'll see the same videos and tasks that I showed you, but he also has, and your agents also have a place to add actions. And these are some of the demonstrations I've done. You know, got a listing. So he clicks add, and uh, that action plan updates. So when you log in to manage his progress, you can see what he did. So now, let's go back. So I go to Manage Accountability, and I want to do Progress Reporting. This is a new feature, so we can go in and see Progress Reporting, who's active, who's not active, and what's been completed. And um, so now we can go in here, and I can click on the email of the individual person, and I can see the videos that were watched when they were watched. We can see the tasks when they were completed and the actions reported back. It is a powerful, powerful tool for, for all of you. We've added a new um, feature. Let's go back to progress reporting by time period. Just so you know, this is new. Um, in the past, you could go to enrolled agents, you click on their email, and you can see their specific action. The progress reporting by time period is similar, except that you can say what was done last week, or you can say what was done last month. Now, mine isn't a good thing to show because I'm not having a lot of agents in here that I'm demonstrating. But you can now log into your account, managers, administrators, and find out who's doing what over the period. Well, we had another request. They say, you know, I don't have to think about logging in all the time. How about if you just tell us? Okay, brand new feature as of, I don't know, hours ago. I think it was Friday. If you go to settings, and then settings again, <coughs> You have two options on sending daily account sending accountability progress reporting. You can choose to get a daily email or a weekly email. If somebody, you know, has another thing other than that, uh, you're welcome. Yeah, let us know. But right now, we thought daily and weekly ought to be enough. So I, for my account, I said send me a daily accountability progress reporting. And if I go to my email, you can see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five of these have been sent to me, and these aren't very busy, obviously, because I don't have a lot of people in there, but you and your managers can get an email every week or every, every day, whatever you want, and it just shows here's the progress for the previous, you know, for the previous week. So I think it's a great way to keep the managers and agents together. It's going to tie into my next presentation on coaching, but there has to be a bond, there has to be a two-way accountability between managers and agents. The accountability plans are a powerful tool to get people doing videos, tasks, and actions. The progress reporting provides the next link and the, and the email is a way to keep people on track. So I hope you enjoy that. If you have questions, you can certainly call us, but just to show you again. Uh, settings, settings again, and then right here, you can go send daily, send weekly, <coughs> whatever you choose to do. I sent daily so I could get some demonstrations for you. So the accountability, if you want to enroll agents, all you do is pick out an action plan, based listing. 
you click on Enroll Agent, and you can go down and click the agent that you want to have in it, and enroll the agent, and they'll be in here. I'm going to just stop for a second and, uh, and uh, see if you guys have any questions on this. Have a good attendance today, so I'm going to give you a second. Um, oh, uh, Martha said, I'm not sure where you posted your handouts. Um, what if you have a custom plan? Okay, Martha, good questions. First of all, I drag the handouts into the handouts section, and you know what? I can't see your view, so I I don't know. Martha, I'm going to unmute you. Martha, can you hear me? Yes, I hey, can. Martha. Hey, Martha, there's got to be a section that says handouts on your... <coughs> uh, At the top? I... Mm. I don't know. Uh, Unmuted. I've yeah, got a section I don't see. handouts, and I dragged two handouts into it, mm -hmm. and uh, there, there's no place on there that says it says on the, okay, it's on the control panel. Do you see? Oh, the control okay. Panel? Well, I'm not on that screen, but yeah, I'll look for it later. Okay. okay. So it's on the control panel. Let me show you one other thing uh, for the two handouts, just in case it's not working. If you click on Manage Your Resources, you see I got to uh -huh. that under your videos, Manage Your Resources. Right here is RET Accountability Plan Features and Benefits. That's one of the handouts, and the other one is the tutorial. So you can also get okay. them right out. Hey, Great. thanks for Thank asking. You. And let me see, Martha, you had a... Uh, what's your other question about the custom plan? Accountability. So if you're doing an accountability uh, with someone and it's not a specific plan, it's not a 30-day plan, it's not a rising star, whatever, and you decided to do something specific with them, um, will that would that show up as a template, that, a custom template that you've made, or how would that work with the accountability plan? Well, the answer is yes, it would show up. So if you want to make a custom plan, uh, mm -hmm. what you do is pick one of these that's closest to the custom. Mm -hmm. uh, we took the idea of having a button that just says new and having you start fresh. We have not done that yet. We could, but right now I would pick the one that's closest. So give me an example of your custom plan. Well, for um, I have some new agents that aren't brand new, so and they're they're I guess they're rising stars in a sense, but not even quite there. Sort of between the new agent and the rising star, you know. And so I have specific videos that I want them to watch first. So I wanted to do that with them. Um, and so I was just looking at the accountability for that to make sure they get that done. Then we'll go back and see what else I want them to do. Based on what you told me, what I would do is I would clone the new agent multi-week plan, then I would click on structure, and then I would delete the sections that are too basic for them, like getting started and introduction oh, to process. Got it. Okay. So I would clear some of those out. So I'd look down this list of 14 and go, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, and out of the 14 sections, I don't know, delete two, three, four of them that you, <laughs> that you think they're beyond. And then you uh -huh. can click on these and move them up and down, and you can change the name, you can change the sequence. Okay. And then after you've done that, update the plan, and then the next thing, go back to this new agent fast start that, and go in and edit it. And each week has its own sub edit, so you could go in here, go on videos and select or deselect any of the videos that you want. It's a little bit tedious okay. to go down this list of videos, but once you've done it. And then the same with the task. If you're in a section that you like, but there's tasks you don't like, just click delete. Got it. Or rename Thank it or you. whatever you want. So so I think starting with an existing template will save you tons of time. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's that's a really good question though. Um, oh I see lots of questions on this. Um, can a manager assign action plans? I'm going to, just a second, Bob, I'm going to mute Martha, and I'm going to unmute. Hey, Bob, can you hear me? Yeah, I can, dude. Okay, Bob, uh, you were asking, can a manager assign action plans? The answer is yes. And, and does the branch manager see just their agents when they do the reports? Yes, sir. Good question. Uh, okay. Once you once you create an uh, an action company, 
uh, every manager will see it. And that assumes that everybody in your database is coded by office and by manager, okay. which I think you guys have done, right? Yeah, we're in the process, yep. Yeah, so if, if the lady named Cheryl is manager of the East office, when she logs in, Cheryl will see only her agents, not all 1,200 of your agents. She'll see only her office. And then when she goes to accountability, manage accountability, that's where she can enroll her agents. So but every manager has to have been assigned a branch and they have to be coded as a manager. Perfect. Thank you. Everybody get that? Uh, so everybody's got to be coded as a manager and in a, and in a branch. Let's see if there's any other questions out here. Any other questions? I'm scrolling down here. Um, and I'm going to unmute you again. Bob, by the way, yeah, you're using the accountability plans pretty well, aren't you? Starting to, yeah. You're starting to. And do you have any early replace. results? Or are you still as building? You know, as you know, David, we're trying to replace our hard copy blueprint for success and uh, use this instead. Well, one of the reasons we started was Dan Washington, who had a $75 manual, training manual, 75 bucks per agent. <coughs> and uh, he said, you know, this is costing me a lot of money. Couldn't we just take it all, put it in a PDF, and upload it and make our own training program? And that's that's how this all started. Great. Oh, okay, seeing no further questions, I think we've covered all the technical report. We've done the email, the progress reporting by time. We've shown the emails and the settings. Oh, I know. Here's a new feature that I'm considering. And uh, the first time I sent the email out, I think I freaked everybody out because uh, I didn't write it very well in it. And people, I think, thought uh, that I was going to do advertising on our real estate training site. We will absolutely not do that. However, we I just wanted to float it out there to see if any of you would like to put your own affiliated businesses, sponsors, anything on your site. So I was thinking we'd create a little area for you to upload a logo or you know, make the logo hyperlink, things like that. And um, you could either sell space, so if you had a sponsor, maybe offset the cost of your training. Uh, a couple of companies I talked to said, yeah, we love that. I don't think we're going to collect any money, but we will put our mortgage and title and insurance company up there uh, just as a way of staying in front of our agents because, you know, obviously they make money off the affiliated uh, deal. So anyway, it's it's an idea. Again, I want to make this very clear. You, It would be a feature that you can choose to use or not. And if you did, you put your own, <laughs> you put your own uh, logos and sponsors up there. This is not available now. I wanted to just see if anybody's interested in it. So just let me pause and if you guys would go into your questions area and just tell me good idea bad idea um, you know would you like it or not like it uh, the idea was like twofold number one I don't know maybe sell some sponsorship space and number two maybe you um, okay Martha likes the idea and like I say and by the way this doesn't cost you anything it would be an extra feature be free you could choose to use it uh, Bob uh, hey Bob I'm gonna unmute you how would you use it Bob uh, with our affiliates, you know, our affiliates are the ones that bring in the revenue that pays for this, so I would like to have that up there every time an agent goes in to see it, that our mortgage company and our title company is sponsoring this. Okay, so you wouldn't charge them, you would just do it as an advertisement? Yeah, they're already paying for it, and, and the fact that they bring the revenue in that supports your system, David. Okay, perfect. Uh, at least Travis says in all caps, like, 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 with an exclamation mark. <laughs> I guess that's a pretty pretty good support. So so far, no, <clears throat> nobody's against it. I pulled a couple of our members, and they said, "No, we don't want any advertise. We don't want you advertising on the site." He said, "No, no, no. It's going to be yours." So, okay, good. Uh, I'm going to tell our programmer to go ahead with it because if people don't want to use it, uh, they don't have to. So now, um, sponsor area. We talked about that. I want to remind you guys again. I am doing the Skype video conferences or Google Hangouts, whatever. And I got to tell you, I enjoy doing it. It's a lot of fun. I get to meet a lot of, of people without traveling. But more importantly, the agents get a kick out of it. We do question and answer back and forth. Um, sometimes I rant about stuff and just have fun. But it wakes up your office meeting, and it really gets people interested in the training. They go, oh, that guy sounds like a lot of fun. Well, <laughs> I had one office say, how long have we had this training? And the manager said, I don't know, we've had it three or four months. So just know that this is a service I'll do. I got to do is call me up. In fact, I'm going to show you one other thing. Let me take you back 
to Homepage Videos, go to Manager Resources, and Mary was kind enough to uh, create some tutorials for us on, you know, how do I do a group call on Skype? So you can follow through all of that. Mary shows exactly how to do it. Mary, you're on, so thanks very much. She also did a, uh, a Google Hangouts tutorial. So you guys let me know whether you want to do Google or whether you want me to do Skype or whatever. But we put the tutorials up there for you to make it easy. So take me up on it. It's a lot of fun, and uh, and I charge uh, 1900 bucks to do this for anybody else. So it's a valuable tool. Uh, so let's talk about five tips for coaching very quickly. Uh, I was with, um, oh, I had lunch with Mike Ferry a while ago, and he, he, you know Mike, he can be kind of cynical, and Mike made a comment, he says, you know what, if managers did their job, I would be broke, <laughs> he says, because managers don't like coaching, so agents will pay me a thousand a month to do it, and uh, that'll probably always be the case, but let's just take a look at five things that you guys can, can do for coaching agents. Uh, first First of all, if you take a look at the difference between the top agents and the rest, you know, the top agents, they're responsible, the rest are entitled. I want my broker to do it for me. I want to get more leads. The top agents take initiative. The rest are indifferent. The top agents, you know, they want results. Everybody else has reasons why they don't do it. Your good agents will use your company tools. The others don't even know you have <laughs> company tools. Uh, the best agents are the ones that are accountable to themselves, and the others need external accountability. But I want to stop there. If you take a look at some of the videos we had on how top producers set their goals, I think it's the KFT 5123 series. Uh, I talked to 10 or 12 of the top agents in America, and I asked them about internal versus external accountability. And I was surprised to discover that they actually, as good as they are, still relied on external accountability. Uh, they couldn't be accountable just to themselves. They needed a partner, a mentor partner. and uh, Oh gosh, one lady had a partner in another city. They were really good friends. And they would hold, e hold each other accountable on how many listings or leads or this, that, or the other thing. And whoever had, had, had the fewest had to buy the other lunch, you know, something to that effect. So, you know, maybe it's easier to work out when you have a partner. It's easier to do anything when somebody else is holding you accountable. I guess in the perfect world, we'd all be completely accountable to ourselves. And those of us who are the true entrepreneurs, it's the only way it can be. <clears throat> uh, your top agents start their own teams. The bottom will leave your team. So how do we make, get these people to the top motivated? Number one, don't try to change them all at once. You know, you go to management seminars or even you listen to this webinar, and the first thought would be, oh, my gosh, I've got 20 agents, 50 agents, 80, 120, whatever that number is. It's like, oh, my gosh, this is, yeah, it's easy for you to teach. Yeah, you come to my office and try to manage all these agents. So I would say to all of you listening as managers, start with a few, maybe start with one, just one, maybe two, whatever. Start with a few agents in your office. Say, you know what? I'm going to get a coaching group together and I'm going to see if I can't get two, three, four agents and have them maybe be a volunteer to be part, part of a coaching program. And then you can do some permission coaching. And step number one of my five tips is one-on-one -on -one meetings. Ken Blanchard in his book, One Minute Manager, which by the way, that book is as powerful today as it was when he wrote it back in the 90s. One Minute Manager, Ken Blanchard talked about management by walking around. What he meant by the One Minute Managers, all you have to do is spend a minute with somebody and show them you care. And, um, and maybe the first step would be, in a perfect world, meet with everybody in your office once a month for a minute, two minutes, three, five, whatever. <clears throat> and I know one manager would put a, a clipboard outside his office and he'd put some time slots on there and say, these are my meeting times, you know, do a five minute meeting with everybody and, you know, pick your time and, you know, put your name on that time slot and then do five minute meetings. Or maybe you do a Google calendar and you share that, people go on and they do it that way, whatever, high tech, low tech. And then the next step would be, you know, don't have your permission to coach you. We're dealing with independent contractors, and there's this belief, well, I can't tell them what to do. I get that. I respect the independent contractor agreement, no question about it. But people still want to be led. They want to be inspired. They want to be motivated. And if you ask their permission, would you like some help, then you can proceed. So in the meeting, there's so many good questions you're going to ask, but, you know, how would you evaluate your performance? What's been working? What needs improvement? Uh, what would? How would you like me to coach you? Where do you need help? Maybe, you know... 
maybe I'll add that question, how can I help? I believe that was Steve Covey's, one of his big questions was, how can I help? And you sit down with your agent, tell me how it's going, what's going on. And by the way, I think it's important that you get personal with them. Let's face it, when you look at the word salesperson, you got to look at the person first. Uh, what's going on at home? What's going on with their family? How's their health? How's their life? Because that will directly affect their performance. And people need someone to listen. So this is your opportunity to sit down with somebody, ask them how, and then just be quiet and listen. And you may find so many opportunities to help your agents. And again, if you have 80 agents in your office and you get a nosebleed just thinking about doing this, just try a few. Number two, a 30-day plan. If you're dealing with somebody who needs to be coached to a higher performance, put them into a 30-day plan. What you would do is lay down a timeline for 30 days. By the way, this is also for those who want to decruit. And rather than just firing somebody, <coughs> you'd like to do something with compassion. You know, you sit down with somebody and say, hey, you know, how do you feel you're doing in your business? And they go, oh, everything's really great. Well, let's take a look at how many listings have you had, how many appointments, how many open houses, how many this, how many that. And you find out they really haven't done a whole lot. So sit down and once again ask for permission. Say, you know, you know, Jim, I've been sitting with you and I watch you and I really believe that you're, you have the ability to be so much more productive and I want to see, you know, do you still like the real estate business? Would you like some help? Would you like to grow? And if the person says, yeah, I really would like some help, then say, how about this? I'm going to put you on a 30-day plan. Uh, we're going to start today. We're going to set up some prospecting activities, field work, training sessions, some office involvement. And we're going to get together and meet once, once a week, every Friday at 1 o'clock or something. And then you ask them, what do you feel would be a reasonable outcome at the end of this? And then you agree on specific, measurable behaviors, not listings, not sales, because in the purest description of management, you cannot hold people accountable for a listing or sale because they have no control over that. They only have control over the behavior that would create the listing or scale, a sale. So you can hold them accountable for how many calls, how many contacts, how many mailings, how many open houses, how many doors do you knock on. So, you know, if you were managing somebody's weight, you can't hold them accountable for how much they weigh, but you can hold them accountable for eight glasses of water, 20 minutes of exercise, you know, three meals a day, last meal before 6 p.m., uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you manage the behavior and it's axiomatic the results will follow. If you take a look at uh, Knox First Tuesday, or I'm sorry, Knox Management Training, KMT07 Worksheet Performance Evaluation. Uh, this is a sheet that you can use when you coach agents. Uh, write down name, date, and for what period. And you sit down and say, let's take a look at some transaction goals, listing sales, closing, referrals. But now let's talk about the activity, because this is where you can hold them accountable. How many follow-up calls do you think you should make in this week? Um, I think I would probably make this a weekly report, certainly not. I think daily is obviously too short, monthly is too long, so maybe a weekly report. How many sphere of influence, past clients, et cetera. And you could add your own, make up your own categories, but I've covered the basics. And then events like office meetings, training sessions, watching the online videos, shadowing an agent. Um, and this is a form you give them, you agree on the goal, and then when you meet with them on Friday, just say, how did you do? and inspect what you expect, which also ties into our accountability plan. So this is, you know, this is where you sign them an action plan. So this is a close-up view of it. But I think it's a nice form to use to sit down with these people and then they've got to bring the form in the next day and say, well, <coughs> let's see how you did. Now if at the end of a four-week period they did exactly the performance um, activity, and they got no listing, no sales record, then we're going to have to take a look at some of their skills. There's another sheet, uh, Prospecting and Contact Log. It's just something where you put a, put a line through the number. If you saw Lawrence Wong making his 100 cold calls in the morning, he, just, he does the old way where you go one, two, three, four, five, and across, one, two, three, four, five, and across. Um, but you could also just use this and, and put a line through the number. So some forms for you to use. So here's how it would look. Um, if, uh, if it's an appointment, they get in uh, an appointment. They get an. I'm sorry. A line is connect. A line is a call. X is a connect, and a circle is it turned into an appointment. Number three, follow up. Uh, inspect what you expect. Once you've done this prospecting call log or the other <coughs> forms I'm talking about, you need to sit down with the people again one week from now, whatever, and follow up and ask them how they did. Number four, this is the oldest rule in the world of coaching another person. That is, tell them what to do, not what not to do. 
classic uh, bad example of that is they say, don't talk after the closing question. What would be a right way to say that? The right way to say that is, be quiet after the closing question. You know, parents say to the kids, don't run, don't run. Well, the only word that's operative is run, so you say walk. Don't slam the door. Uh, it should be close the door quietly. So when you're coaching your agents, as you listen to yourself telling people what to do, make sure you're not telling them what not to do. The only time you tell somebody what not to do is after they've made that mistake. But immediately after they've done something wrong, uh, as Lou Teich used to say, use the words next time and tell them what to do. Uh, I've often said this, this is such a bad sign <laughs> when they say, uh, you know, no left turn. Your brain has to actually look to the left and go, oh, go to the left. No, you don't go that way. It would be so much better just say, go this way. It's just faster on the human brain. So when you do a follow-up meeting, ask the questions. What were the agreed upon behaviors? What were the results? What worked? What didn't? How do they compare? Why? What's next? How can I help you? and get into a discussion with these people and find out if they're giving you results or reasons. Next, feedback versus advice. Uh, the best motivator of human performance is instantaneous feedback on results. Kenneth Blanchard, author of One Minute Manager, one of my favorite authors ever. Um, a good example of this I've used in live seminars with managers where I stand in front of an audience and I pull my tie way crooked over to the left and I say, if you were a manager, um, what would you do? You know, they're looking up at me and my tie's all crooked. And then I asked manager, what would you do? Um, one manager comes up. I remember this lady actually stood up. And she grabbed my tie and she straightened it out. And I said, well, the good news is you straightened my tie, but you also taught me uh, that I don't have to straighten my own tie. <clears throat> and now I'm codependent. So she's probably the kind of manager that fixes. She's deal doctoring. She fixes up everything. She picks them up and dusts them off. She takes care of them. And she's the same manager complaining, my gosh, my day's so busy. All I do is take care of my agents. <laughs> well, yeah, because you're, you're constantly fixing their tie rather than teaching them how to do it. Uh, other people say, hey, dude, your tie's crooked. Well, what do you mean crooked? Crooked left, crooked right. I don't even know what that means. So that's a judgmental call. It's not a specific behavior. And finally, uh, the best answer, I'd be curious to see if anybody knows the right answer to this little riddle. Um, just for the fun, I know webinars are so hard to get two-way <laughs> communication, but I'm just curious if anybody listening would realize the right answer to getting somebody to straighten their tie. Come on, somebody type something. Somebody type anything. Just <laughs> remind me you were there. Somebody's standing up, they got a crooked tie. Think of an agent, their tie's crooked, and he's heading on a listing presentation. What is the proper way to change their behavior? <laughs> Gail says, take your tie off. Well, you're giving that person advice. And I would also say, I don't know what you mean. Why would I take my tie off? Let's, the goal is to have a straight tie. So if the goal is to have the person with a straight tie, uh, what would you do? Uh, <laughs> Travis, what do you think? This is funny. Travis says your head's not straight. But by the way, those kinds of answers, those cute answers, they, they don't get to the point. Uh, let's see if anybody else has the right answer. Uh, tell them they might want to straighten their tie. Martha, that sounds like a good idea because that's what you want them to do. But I don't know, straighten what? Straighten left or right? Have you ever said, hey, you got something on your cheek? No, your other cheek. No, the left side. No, the other left. You know, <laughs> they, can't, they can't figure it out. So tell them to straighten their tie. Go, what do you mean straighten? What's the matter with it? They don't know what's the matter with it. Uh, that wasn't Gail, it was her ugly hubby. <laughs> hey, ugly, ugly. <laughs> Keep me. Uh, Martha, laugh out loud. Some of you, Dan, will you just give me the answer? Uh, I do like doing this exercise because the answer to the riddle is a metaphorical answer that really, really, really applies to life, husbands, wives, and children. Tell them to check their appearance. Uh, you are so close, you're so close, and what would be the best way? What would be the best way? Uh, I'm gonna unmute you. Hanky, go ahead, tell me. You are, you, you are closest to the right answer. So how would you do that? Your mic is open. <coughs> your mic is open, well, maybe it's not working. The answer is check your appearance, but how would you have them check the appearance? Um, let's see if there's one more answer here. There it is. Martha, you have the answer. You are the winner. The answer is look in the mirror. The answer is look in the mirror. And as simple as this is, 
being a good manager, mother, father, parent, you could give people advice or you could give them feedback or better yet, you direct them to their own feedback and that's where we're going. You want them to look in the mirror. So if you have somebody with a crooked tie, you look at them, you say, hey, dude, look in the mirror. What happens? Watch what happens when you look in a mirror. You go to the restroom and look in the mirror. What do you do? You look and you adjust this, you adjust that. Everybody fixes themselves. You know, they comb their hair, they do this. <clears throat> the mirror is the most powerful way to change behavior. You know, you drive by a building and you can see a reflection. You look in the mirror and go, oh, wow, that's crooked. Uh, thanks for helping. Now, if somebody looks in the mirror and they go, I don't see any problem with this, <laughs> that's, a whole, that's a whole different thing. But when you tell people, hey, your tie's crooked or fix your tie, yeah, your attentions are good. You're trying to fix the behavior. But if you show them through feedback, through videotape, through mirrors, <clears throat> what's wrong, you are far more likely to get them to fix their own problem. I remember, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, remember David Hasselhoff <laughs> was drunk one night. He was falling down and he had food all over himself. And I believe his daughter took a video of him. Up until then, I'm sure a lot of people told him, hey, you've got a problem. Your tie is crooked, so to speak. No, I'm fine. I can quit drinking anytime. But I think when he saw the video himself that his daughter took, I think that is what made the change. Having come out of a background of helping people in, you know, dependency recovery. Uh, feedback really is the answer. In fact, I don't know if any of you have been involved in any kind of things like uh, AA recovery or addiction recovery or marital counseling or anything like that. Um, they have a device called the fishbowl where people sit down and say, hey, give them feedback. Here's what you are like when you've been drinking. Here's what you're like as a manager. You might say, here's what you're like when you're in our office and you, d and you disrupt things. So when you give people uh, People ask for advice, but what they really need is feedback. Feedback describes how you feel about what somebody does, whereas advice prescribes what to do. So in a marriage, you know, when you tell your partner what to do, it will typically create a fight. Uh, but if you say, hey, here's how I feel when this happens, you know, you're still going to be in a discussion, but you're taking responsibility for your own feelings, and it lets the other pe person know the impact they're having on you. Uh, feedback says, here's where you are. Advice tells you where to go. Feedback plots your position, advice plots your course. A GPS, does the GPS give feedback or advice? It gives both. Sometimes it's just feedback. You look at the map and you go, here's why I am. A lot of people, if you're in a familiar area, you look at your GPS and go, oh, okay, I'm here, I'm on the south side of the street, okay, I gotta go up, take a right, and I'm out of here. If you're in a GPS, you have no clue where you are, well, then you want some advice. Feedback statements begin with I feel or I see, whereas advice is, oh, I really think you should do this. Feedback is empowering, advice is limiting, etc. So uh, the idea is to give feedback to as much as you can. So maybe you're on an on location meeting with an agent or you're doing a role play. In fact, if you're doing our eye practice role play in the left column, you say, here's what happened and here's, you know, here's how you felt about it. Now, if you go to KMT 29 worksheet feedback guidelines, there's a whole video that gets into detail on this and I may just delegate that to it. But the idea of giving some somebody feedback or coach is to number one, observe the behavior, and if you didn't get to see it, have them describe what happened. And then a setting a meeting, which is basically, hey, you know, do you, do you have, I really want to give you some feedback on something. Is now a good time? Let's meet in my office. Do I have your permission to give you feedback? Great. And then, this is an interesting part, when you are afraid to confront people with something that's bugging you, maybe you've got an agent in the office that's really disruptive and you're just so afraid to say that to the person, what you may do is ask them to evaluate. And you might sit down with this person and say, you know, I want to talk to you about your interaction uh, in the office with other agents and before I begin, let me ask you, how, how do you feel you get along with everybody else in the office? Now the risk is they're completely unaware. Um, that's a risk. Go, oh, I think I get along fine with people when in fact they don't. And in that case, you're going to have to report and reprimand. Say, you know, let me tell you how you act in the office and let me tell you how I feel about it. By the way, when somebody is doing something well, you know, they, they do a great job on a telephone call converting a client. You say, hey, I just happened to listen on your phone call. How do you feel you handle that? And they go, oh, I don't know, I guess it was okay. If they don't know what they're doing right, well, it's very difficult for them to do it again. And the self-evaluation is one of the greatest solutions to this. I remember years ago we had somebody in our company who was way abusing the Internet, constantly on the Internet and, you know, doing a lot of personal stuff. And I was really a concerned about how to confront. And 
I remember it vividly. I sat down. I said, you know, how do you feel about your use of the internet for personal time? And she just completely broke down and said, I know I use it too much. You know, it's way that. And the beauty of that was she came forward and admitted everything and made my job easier. Now, I had to be prepared for her to say, I don't use it that much. And of course, now you've got to confront. And then um, when somebody has made a mistake and you want them to do better, uh, you use the word next time and then you tell them what to do. And then at the end, you say, hey, you know, great to have you on board. So uh, these are the four things that I went through. And um, MPF, model practice feedback, I talk about eye practice where you set up a model, you show an image of the right behavior. That's why I love the mentor series. I know it's old, 1998, they're dated, but the role plays are still perfect. And then you have somebody do a, <coughs> a role play, and then you videotape it with your iPhone, iPad, and you play it back. I, and I've said this, and I'll say it over and over and over again, the best feedback you will ever give another agent is to videotape that person in a role play. Five minutes, a first five minutes of a listing, an open house for sale by owner, telephone call, doesn't matter. Some skill. Because when that agent looks in that perfect mirror, and listens to themselves on video and watches themselves. You ever done that? They go, do I really sound that way? And you go, yes, that's really how you sound. They go, wow, I had no idea. And then what happens is they straighten their tie, <laughs> to use that metaphor. So I hope those five tips have helped you. Uh, I know that our videos can provide the model. Uh, if you take a search on the eye practice in the site, you can see how do I practice and I think it's a great way to to do coaching of people so uh, I'm just gonna pause for one minute and see if anyone has any questions or comments on what I presented or anything at all this is your time and I'm just going to open up the questions panel see if anybody has any comments <laughs> Martha <coughs> Ernie says yay Martha for getting the right answer look in the mirror and I want to say again, I, it's, I've been pounding this for years, that the best mirror in the management business is an iPhone or an iPad. Just videotape them. In fact, if you want to have a great coaching interaction with one of your agents, um, have them come into your office and do a three minutes. Say, show me how you open up a listing presentation. Let's practice right now. Have somebody uh, videotape that and play it back. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording, but Rob, before we stop, I just want to say to everybody, thank you very much for being members of Real Estate Training by DavidKnox.com. And as a short commercial, I just want you to know that our consumer videos are all updated now. We updated pricing your home to sell. I think last year we did preparing home to sell, selling by owner. This year, expired listing is was updated on Friday. That's how new that is. You've got to watch it. It is the coolest video. It's really, really beautiful. And you can download the mobile app where you can play it on your iPhone or send it from the iPhone. You can go online and do it that way. Uh, for your agents, it's about 20 bucks a month to send it. We also have a company account, so if anybody's interested in that, uh, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. So, for example, if you have an office of, uh, well, let's say 25 agents, uh, it's 175 a month, seven bucks per agent. You can actually charge your agents, you know, 10 bucks and and keep the rest uh, and fund the training or pass on the savings to them, whatever you'd like to do. So, thank you all for being members of Real Estate Training by DavidKnox.com, and thanks for listening to this webinar.